Hello, you're all very welcome back to our 33-day retreat. And we continue with day four on de Montfort's consecration, part two. And yesterday we emphasised the value of consecrating ourselves to the Virgin Mary on our retreat. And this consecration needs to come from ourselves. We need to give ourselves totally to Our Lady as we walk through life. And that's not an easy task for us. And so we read from day four of the consecration. Yesterday I said that Saint Louis gives two special emphasis in, in his teaching on Marian consecration. One, a renewal of our baptismal vows, and two, a particularly an intimate gift of ourselves to Mary. We covered the first emphasis yesterday. Now let's look at the second, beginning by asking the question, why should we give ourselves to Mary? We should give ourselves to Mary in imitation of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. After all, didn't Jesus give himself to Mary from the moment of the Incarnation? Yes, he did. And aren't we called to imitate Christ? Yes, we are. But isn't Mary a creature? Yes, she is, but she's unique. Not only is Mary free from sin and totally conformed to God's will, but by God's will and good pleasure, we are learned from the introduction, Mary has a special role in our sanctification. Therefore, we should give ourselves to the Mother of God so she can help form us into saints, into other Christs. We should give her our yes. But St. Louis takes all of this a step further. His yes to Mary is particularly deep, a profoundly intimate gift of himself to Mary. This devotion consists then in giving ourselves entirely to Our Lady, in order to belong entirely to Jesus through her. We must give her one, our body, with all its senses and its members, two, our soul with all its powers, three, our exterior goods of fortune, whether present or to come, four, our interior and spiritual goods, which are our merits and our virtues, and our good works, past, present and future. This fourth point is most interesting. By this aspect of our consecration to Mary, according to St. Louis, our gift of self to her goes even beyond what is required when people offer themselves to God through religious vows. For instance, by virtue of the vows of poverty, chastity and obedience, a religious sister does not give God the right to dispose of the grace of all her good works, nor does she give up her merits. Allow me to bring into better focus just how radical a gift of its oneself this Marian consecration really is. First, in regards to others, if we give Mary the right to dispose of all the graces of our good works, then this means we cannot unconditionally apply such graces to whomever we choose. So for instance, if we make such an offering to Mary, I cannot insist that the graces from a sickness I am offering up to go to the person I want them to apply to. Second, in regard to ourselves, if we consecrate ourselves to Mary, then when we die, we won't get to appear before God clothed with the merits of our prayers and good works. In fact, we'll have to appear before God with empty hands because we will have given all our merits to Mary. If the radical nature of this offering has got you worried, don't be worried. Tomorrow we'll see why this offering is not to be feared, and in fact why it's incredibly beautiful and completely worth it. Until then, we can reflect on the second part of de Montfort's formula for Marian consecration, which speaks of this infinite, intimate gift of ourselves to Mary. 
in the presence of all the heavenly court, I chose you this day for my mother and queen. I deliver and consecrate to you as your slave my body and soul, my goods, both interior and exterior, and even the value of all my good actions, past, present and future, leaving to you the entire full right of disposing of me and all that belongs to me, without exception, according to your good pleasure for the greater glory of God in time and eternity. Today's prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, living in Mary, help me to give myself entirely to Jesus through Mary. Amen.